get into Facebook tonight. Woohoo, that'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to go live. How come we're not using the StreamYard? Because I use it with um, Je Jen Houston flawlessly. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm bad luck. <laughs> I, don't I don't know, think so, Sarah. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Um, why are we not using it? Um, I don't know if, uh, if there's a specific reason. Okay. Because I know that Jen had her own um, account with Zoom, and then when we tried, um, when we used the um, streamer, she said, man, I love this so much more that she dropped the account with Zoom and bought uh, an account with uh, StreamYard. Because what's nice along the bottom of StreamYard, it'll put a, it'll put, like, do a ticker tape, and so you can put an announcement on it that'll keep streaming the whole show. And on the side, you can see when people are commenting and stuff. Oh, that's so right. It's really, it's really, and you can have up to six people on it too. And I think you can put more hours in in a month than you can with Zoom. It's more limited with Zoom, so she's loving it. And you can add your own um, your own little logo or watermark for each person, if they have a business logo or something. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it is kind of nice. Yeah, so we could see the comments that my mom makes. What do we do? <laughs> yeah, one of our, our uh, dedicated followers. Yeah, she sure is. <laughs> nice to have that. Yeah, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> That's my mom. My mom's my biggest fan. <laughs> It's always that way. It's always that way. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> I'm going to nerd out a little bit about cats and stress management. I'll discuss, I was going to bring up to sleep. Sleep is a big thing that's being affected right now. Mm -hmm. Too much or not enough? Not enough. Uh, I think either or. It depends. Some people are having tr their whole sleep patterns upset they're not getting up for work so they're sleeping in and they don't know what day it is and i mean i think across the board mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know what day it is um but i just um i don't know and i'll be eating my feelings with this uh watermelon candy mm -hmm. also peach candy oh. and and raspberry candies oh you mean like um are they called raspberry? What do they call them? They're called um, Swedish berries, aren't they? This kind, the Haribo. Okay, yeah, probably the same idea. Yeah, I freaking love them. Uh, so I went to, um, I treated myself today and I got um, sushi after work. And um, and they were like, Our okay, well, you have to- Live on Facebook. Was... Ooh, woohoo, exciting. Yes, hello everybody and welcome to Relationships, actually um, Real Talk Relationships. And I'm with the wonderful Sarah Gallardo. It's our weekly uh, show that we do together. We are co-hosts uh, and we do this show to get into your life. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, dealing with stress during COVID. Be a little more specific on, on that topic tonight. Coping, coping methods, and, and just different things like that. My name is Bill Shultima. I'm one of the hosts. I'm the male portion of, of the program. And I'm a relationship coach. And I help men and women work through the struggles that they have in their lives and their relationships. And I'm also a published author. The book Words Woman Love you can find on Amazon. And I encourage you to get that book. A lot of people oh, I'm doing wow. the founder of Sarah Speak, which is for domestic violence awareness. Um, I am a subject matter expert on the topic of domestic violence. People remove toxicity from their life and um, try to improve their relationships, their decisions, um, things like that. I am also a published author of the book Hiding in Plain Sight, which is 
also available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And um, if you were interested at all in looking into the work that I am involved with, you can check me out at sarahspeaksup.org. That's Sarah with an H. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we're talking about stress. Um, for yourself right now, in this moment, what's your stress number between one and 10? Um, I think I'm at a seven. A seven stress, meaning the higher we go, the more stress you, you're feeling. Yeah, so a 10 is like, oh, <laughs> um, yeah, maybe a six, seven. I, I think I kind of waver. It depends. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I, I, I do have things like journaling and writing that um, are more of my passion um, in terms of like coping. Yeah and outlets, things like that. Um, I also have some really great and really close friends who I stay in close contact with throughout this time. Yeah. And I also have two lovely cats who keep me very busy and who I enjoy yeah. playing with. So this was today's toy. This is a new interesting toy. So the end, okay, so there's like a laser pointer. Oh yeah, they love then, that. One cat likes this. He's, he's going to destroy this. Um, <laughs> but I think um, I bring that up because I know a lot of people find solace and they get comfort from their an like animals and pets. Um, yeah. Sure. Sometimes that snuggling and that cuddling, that sort of pet therapy mm -hmm. is really um, is really comforting to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm taking full advantage. <laughs> Definitely. Might as well. Yeah. I'm about a two or three. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty grounded. I'm pretty solid and laid back anyways. And I've been in situations in my life when I've been by myself, not a lot of uh, social interactions. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the difference is now it's like, you don't have a lot of that control when you want to go out where you want to go. And, and now we do, that's the one difference. Um, and so, but for stress, I think um, for myself, it's, I need to always, you know, be present in myself mm -hmm. and, and realize the thoughts that I'm thinking and to catch them before they start going off and deviating into a direction that's going to start putting me into a negative space, negative thoughts, thought patterns, whether it's, you know, the poor me, uh, victim mentality or maybe anger because I'm frustrated because I can't do other things I want to do. Um, and so, you know, I have that. Now, the other great thing for myself is I'm creative. So, I mean, I, if I really wanted to, I could sit down and, and, and write. Um, the other thing I do is I pick up my guitar quite frequently during, during, throughout the day to express and get some of that energy out. Um, yeah, that's great for you. I mean, you're awesome at it. Mm, thank you. Thank yeah. you. But you know, anybody that, you know, has any level of art, artistry or, or, or is artistic, I should say, and creative, that's a good way to at least get your mind off of things and get you in, into a better direction, kind of raise your vibration, raise the, the mood, mm -hmm. boost that. Um, I know, I think we've talked about it, you know, use music, you know, have music playing, you know, yeah. some good music. You know, uh, obviously that's positive. That maybe isn't. You know, I think of the Beach Boys. It's so summery and so uplifting. It may not have a lot of. A, I mean, the message isn't like what you maybe necessarily want to hear, but it does have a nice vibe to it, and it can put you in that nice summery feeling. And yeah. yeah, and I think also creating and making in the morning, making an intention that you plan to have a good day, and that you just decide in the morning that I'm going to have a good day. I'm going to make sure that I catch myself. I'm going to make sure that I find things that will keep me in a good space and I will promise myself I'm not going to complain. I promise myself I won't eat too much. I promise the fridge I'll not visit often throughout the day. And oh gosh, I was just talking about all the candies that I have right here. <laughs> yeah. I have a nice array of candies right next yeah. to me. <laughs> well, yeah, that's going to happen, right? That's going to happen. You know, we all have different, I don't know, I guess it's coping. You're sort of treating yourself, but it also... That's what happens. You start to get fidgety when there's nothing to do. You get antsy and fidgety and you need to be doing something. So, you know, you pop candy in your mouth or you, you know, you do something. 
you know, it's just like with a smoker that stops smoking, they get ants and they need something in their mouth. You know, they, you they know what works things, for so. me too, something that works really well. Um, and this just helps elevate my mood a lot. Um, I bought, I, oh my gosh, I keep buying myself plants. I, <laughs> I find that plants in my home space really elevate. It, it makes me feel closer to nature. It's just, it's, I, I just love plants in my space. And so mm -hmm. when I go kind of anywhere um, and they have like plants as a display out front, I'm like, yes to this. And so I just keep bringing home like one every time I go, <laughs> which, yeah, you know, and, and another, another, well, I mean, it's not the worst thing that could be. Yeah. Um, another thing too is people who have like space in their yard or even raised beds or they can use um, yeah. planters in their if they have a deck or something like that um, if you want to grow strawberries or tomatoes or cucumbers or you know here's this is a time where we're kind of all still you know for the most part I think um, at home we can start these projects and even you know hypothetically speaking whenever things begin to uh whenever the restrictions begin to loosen and we're all really able to venture back out um how great would it be now you've got some fruits and veggies planted you know and and get those going this is the perfect time to do something like yeah. that too yeah and it really it takes to show, it takes a commitment to do those things. Um, having a pet is, you know, is, is such a good one because you kind of have to take care of the pet, take it for the walks and things like that. So you have that outlet Whereas someone that doesn't have pets doesn't have that. And that's where having a garden or having something to take care of. If you don't have children, that is, yeah, can be really helpful. That way it gives you something that you can look forward to something that you can, um, Nurture, that nurture. nurture. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Because that will also be helping yourself. Right. Whenever you help someone else or a plant, you're always going to feel good about yourself. You know what other people are doing, and this is this is not for everyone, um, but this is for some people. Um, they're they're people who can sew are really going to town sewing masks, and yeah. I think you know we now have. I mean, shout out to my mom, who I I know always <laughs> watches the show, but um, she's been making masks. Uh, my mom is a great artist, so she's also been painting. I don't know if you saw the painting that I posted that she's recently done. No, I haven't seen it. I'll have to look. Oh, you'll have to check it out, Bill. It's a it's a person with a mask on. She mm -hmm. uh, dedicated it to my aunt, who is a nurse who's working right yeah. now. Um, yeah. But I think. You know that's another that's another thing is really tapping into what feeds your soul mm -hmm. and feeds your spirit. Um, I really like the point of plants and animals because there's a, a, a symbiosis that happens. Yeah. You know, yeah. so we're nurturing them and they are nurturing us back. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's really nice i'm I, depending on how old your children are if you are at home with children you may not be feeling that amount of symbiosis <laughs> you know and at this point probably not <laughs> yeah yeah i mean and it's so hard on them i get it you know they're doing their best to understand what's going on and you know we've got grown adults who are just really struggling with yeah. knowing what to do um i know i know that i have two little nieces who are working really hard i've got a nephew who's you know a little about one and a half so he doesn't quite get it he's yeah just home you know yeah. um but yeah i know it's tough on the kids too and that can really exacerbate things for adults yeah it's, yeah, and you know, it's another great time to do something new. For example, my oldest daughter, 25, has her first little girl, one year old, and the oh. next daughter down, who's 20, is um, cro learn has learned how to crochet or is learning to crochet because she's crocheting something. So she's picked up a new a new a new craft uh -huh. during this time while she's in isolation, and. Um, you know, contributing to the family, I guess, in a way, but it also is, you know, it gives her something to do. It's something she 
he's learned and I feel get to be able to do that you know, now forever. Um, the other thing I want to mention, this is something that I, we may not even think of, is when, and if, if some people can't do this because of the space they're in, but doing, um, getting out somewhere and yelling and screaming and shaking out the, the meanies, shaking out the negative energy and just yelling and screaming and just expressing that out of your system will actually free you up and actually raise your vibration as well and bring a, a vibration and you will feel better as well. Yeah, I've found that, you know, at different times in my life, that's been a really, a really positive thing. Sometimes we don't realize how much we're stuffing and how much mm -hmm. we're carrying and we can become almost like a pot with the water boiling and a, a lid on it. And, you know, it's, it's almost like it's going to boil over. It's going to pop the lid. I mean, like what's going to happen. And so I think the maintenance of yourself is more and most important, right? Because mm -hmm. that's the one person who you do have control over at the end yeah. of the day, you know, um, how do you maintain your, your sanity? Um, and, and I know that I've mentioned this before, but people who are predisposed with issues like depression, anxiety, PTSD, um, I, people have really been reaching out to me, um, on the Sarah Speaks Up page, especially this week, for some reason, I think, it's kind of hit a tipping point for some people and they had hunkered down for as long as they could. They kind of white knuckled it. Um, and they're getting to the point where they're just like, okay, I'm like, don't know what to do right now. It's, you know, that's mm. when it's really important. Um, I think it's, it's a great idea to, if you can't, if, if you're not a journaler, um, there are some online groups that you can join. Um, there are Facebook forums. If you don't have a therapist, because I'm, I'm doing therapy, um, yeah. we meet virtually. And, um, so that's an option for people. If you feel like you need to talk to someone and you don't have a friend or a family member who you're mm -hmm. close enough and open enough with, there are always, I mean, mental health is a big issue right now and, and more so than normal, I think, because people who don't typically struggle with emotional issues have found themselves in this very stressful situation where they, they weren't really prepared for. So um, these things have sort of propped up in people who weren't ready for that, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if you aren't, and if you're not aware of how powerful it is, it really does begin to affect your health. Yes. If you, if you let it brew within you. And um, that's where I talk about release, releasing it. Because um, I've done it where I've taken a hammer and I've gone out and I've found a tree and I've just wailed on it and yelled and just got it out of my system. Um, and it's, it's very therapeutic. Uh, but if, if, um, if you're keeping that, anxiety, that stress percolating within you and you're not dealing with it, it is going to affect your health and which is going to affect your immune system, which is yeah. going to affect how you are as far as the COVID. I mean, it all touches everything, right? It's just the domino it can become a domino effect yeah. where you can't fight that the virus. Um, and yeah, so that it's really important to be really aware of those things. You know, if you can catch yourself, especially if you're dealing with depression that you realizing I'm starting to spiral, I'm starting yeah. to spiral and I need to stop it. Then, you know, hopefully you already have previous coping, uh, coping skills that you can use and you really need to rely on those really heavily mm -hmm. because it's only been exacerbated by being stuck inside and not yeah. knowing the future with not having a sense of hope. It's just compounded by all that and having a lack of control, right? They, a person that's in depression is already feeling a lack of control and feeling hopelessness. This has only made that even 10, 100 times worse. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so, you know, let's talk about sleep because we're talking about how stress affects our health. Well, yeah. Sleep is a huge, huge piece of our mental health, emotional health, and physical health. Mm -hmm. Sleep is 
so important. And I don't know that, I don't know that people give it the airtime that it might deserve. Yeah. Um, I mean, and again, especially lately, I, I think for some reason, in, at least around my area, 3 a.m. seems to be about the time where either I can't fall asleep until 3 a.m. or I've, or I've fallen asleep and I wake up at 3 a.m. and can't fall back to sleep. Um, oh, you haven't heard what that means? You know what that means. Oh, is that something great? I hope so. Yeah, I, ha I think it has something to do with, um, it's a spiritual thing. I'm trying to remember now here I said, you know what that means here. I'm trying to remember what it was. I either had something to do with angels, they're trying to talk to you, or you are an angel. Either way, I'm down with that. Yeah. Either way, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, they say it's a very special thing. When you start waking up, you know, if you're up at three, all of a sudden you kind of wake up around three, there's a reason. Google that and see, you'll find something. Definitely going to do that. So for anyone else who's having this issue, 3 a.m. is a key time. Bill is telling us that either we're part of something special or we are special people. I'm super down with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay, but like other than being possibly being an angel, I feel like waking up at 3 a.m. isn't great for like needing to wake up then again at 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, because I'm still going to work on certain days of the week. Yeah. Not everybody is. Some people can work from home. Mm -hmm. I don't have the kind of job where I can work from home. And mm -hmm. so I'm still doing kind of a schedule, a work schedule. Yeah. Um, and it, it moves, it shakes, it, it switches up because we're all dealing with this coronavirus situation. But um, my coworker talks about not being able to sleep, um, waking up and seeing people posting like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., hey, who else is up? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, and so it kind of goes part and like hand in hand where kind of the running joke is I have no idea what day it is. <laughs> you know, yeah. no, don't know what day it is. Don't know what time it's dark. It's mm -hmm. the sun's out. <laughs> like it's warm, <laughs> you know, and, and that has a lot to do with this whole being quarantined too. So what's been your experience with sleep bill? Well, I'm, I'm getting it. I'm here, you know, I'm by myself. I don't have kids here to have to tend to or, or a dog or cat to have to deal with or bird or budgie or fish. <laughs> um, I've, I've decided what I've done with myself is I've like, there's a freedom to that. And so I give myself a break. I say, okay, you know what? I may be up till 12, one maybe. And if I don't get up till nine, that's okay. Because I can still get work done. I can still do things. I can still reach out, do you know, my coaching and um, different things in that way that's not stopping me and i'm i'm not going to be hard on myself that i need to have a schedule in that sense in that sense if my body's feeling tired and i need to hit the hit the day then i will and so that kind of pressure is off of me and uh in a way it's almost like man i almost feel like i'm in a retirement home the only difference is i'm not allowed to leave but i guess with some retirement homes you're not allowed to leave yeah. So yeah. it is like you're kind of in. And so I know. And so then that creates more empathy within myself for those that are in those situations, like the elderly that are like, they're inside and they don't get visitors or by themselves in their bed. They just see the nurse. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Right? Um, and so, you know, they're, you know, I've learned, I mean, that's something that's come up that I've I didn't really consider or realize. So my experience has caused me to become more empathetic, but I also give myself a break. I'm not hard on myself. If I'm really tired and I want to, sleep in longer than I will yeah. uh, because there are no real major um, things that I need to deal with. Yeah. Um, and so that, that's what I've done for myself. And I'm, I, you know, I get the rest that I need. Yeah. Are you a napper? Do you take naps at times during the day or? Mm, I typically don't. I have, but I typically don't. Oh, I'm a napper. I feel like, I mean, I don't have Spanish like ancestry at all but i'm a siesta girl <laughs> yeah just yeah. siesta all the way well is it warmer down there what is your temperature down there uh oh gosh it's it's gray and overcast today some days are 70s some days are 50s i mean we're still we're about, we're about the same 
springtime yeah yeah so. yeah it's wet and blue it's wet and overcast today so i mean april showers right yeah yeah it for me it was a day to you know treat myself with some sushi and some candy gummies that i was showing you before i'm right now doing a number on these uh candy watermelons <laughs> so, no shame don't feel bad not sorry yeah and sleep you know when you can get a good night's rest that is going to be the best thing for you you know that'll kind of clear your head yeah um, hopefully as long as you don't have a active a dream life where you wake up and it's like man it's not like you even slept that jump all night i mean i people with ptsd and trauma in their past sleep can be a scary thing actually sleep can be something that you try to avoid at times something that um you know i used to have really vivid and kind of felt like all through the night nightmares mm -hmm. um i would wake up sometimes crying sometimes talking like arguing with someone. i felt like someone was attacking me yeah. um so yeah. that's a really tough thing and when when we're our stress level is heightened and so we're i think there's a certain amount of this um sort of gosh what is it almost like this carnal instinct of fight or flight um, something, something is tapping into humans survival yeah. mechanisms so for for everyone that's different what does survival look like some people it, it does look like sanitizing everything staying home you know not doing this etc cetera, etc cetera. some people mm -hmm. it's you know in my opinion unfortunately right yeah. now you know it's rebelling against the rules and going out and fighting for whatever they think they're missing or lacking yeah. um these are all attempts to control your reality yeah you know, to to get your situation to be what you want and or think it should be. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for people who have past trauma, who deal with depression, anxiety, um, sleep can be really, really tricky. Um, I have at times taken things to help me sleep, but mm -hmm. if... Yeah. I'm taking like a sleeping pill or even like a melatonin or something like that. And it's helping me sleep, but my dreams are still very vivid. I could almost feel trapped yeah. in that dream. And where normally my body might wake up and I'm, I'm out of it. Yeah. I might stay asleep and feel kind of stuck in it, you know? Yeah. So that I think we're getting, are we getting closer to 30 minutes? I think, I think we might be. Oh, was I too long winded for you? Oh, no, not for me. Are you trying to cut oh, me off? We got, we got five minutes-ish. No, I would never do that. No, I you know, can not keep your mind. I know. Um, the, one, the one thing I did want to say is that this can also be very triggering because if you were raised in a, in a home household where you weren't allowed to do things and you couldn't go out, that can be um, a, a childhood trigger that could cause emotional flashbacking yeah. in, in your day-to-day -day now. Yeah. Um, but that's where, again, then if you can become present and you, when you realize that's happening, then you can take steps to, to change that story that you're hearing and yeah. work on the programming. And now would be a good time to even start doing more research on, on deprogramming or, or changing the subconscious story that we, that we've been programmed with yeah. and to learn how to, you know, change that. And, you know, yeah. there's so many great resources. If you have a lot of extra time, now's the time to do that extra research, reach out to different, like you said, different groups and start to make, you know, really great connections. I've made some amazing, really deep connections with people through Facebook now differently than before. Yeah. Um, because I think people are really realizing the need for that because they're feeling it. Yeah. And so now, now is a great time to really make some great relationships, great connections that are, that are meaningful and are real and heart centered. You know, I know you said we only have a couple minutes left, but I really want to recap here because I want to leave people with some steps, like yep. we talk about those tools. Um, so we talked okay. about sleep um, and how maybe for some people, sleep regulation could be very important. If you can try to create some kind of sleep schedule for yourself, that's going to help your internal body, your, your, your internal clock inside your body sort of it's it's like a self-regulation 
Mm -hmm. um, if people find that sleeping pills help, um, I know that there's like the Tylenol PM, but without the Tylenol in it kind of a thing. Um, there's melatonin. You can get prescription sleep aids from your doctor. Um, there's also CBD, which yep. can help a lot. CBD helps a lot of people with anxiety. It can help with stress. It can help with sleep. Yeah. Um, we talked about animals, pet therapy. We talked yep. about plants yep. and possibly planting a garden or, um, you know, flowers, whatever kind of floats your boat. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you, uh, I don't want to take over the recap here, Bill. Oh, the other thing was to, if you have a be creative, express yourself in a creative way, whether it's even, it can even just be grabbing one of the kids coloring books and just doing the best you can with it. If you can play an instrument instrument, but also the other one was to go someplace. If you have to go in your car, go for drive into the road, do some screaming, banging on the dashboard, get that energy out of you. That's been holding you back and get lift, lift yourself up. Try not to make the airbag go off on yourself. Cause that would be a mess. Just yeah. saying. <laughs> yeah. Good, good one. Yeah, so those are the two I would add to your list there, a great list, you know, different, I mean, there's a lot of options for people. Yeah, um, even, even just going for walks, I think a lot of times getting outside, we're still really needing to be vigilant with the social distancing, but yeah. being in your house, being sort of contained in this space can feel really uh, difficult for people at times. Just getting out and doing some walking, um, yeah. remembering that you are part of a neighborhood and a community and you are not just home by yourself and this isn't the end of days and like the apocalypse <laughs> oh it isn't oh. <laughs> this is crossing my fingers so <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay i think that's that's pretty much it eh yeah yeah well for this week um we will be back next thursday uh, if you have any questions, suggestions, mm -hmm. anything you'd like us to talk about in the future, mm -hmm. uh, if you find yourself needing help, please reach out to Bill or myself. You yeah. can find us on Real Talk Relationships at Speak Up and Empower, or you can find either one of us on our own personal pages. Nice. Um, so thank you all for being with us. Uh, please stay safe. Please stay healthy and happy if you can. And if you need help, there is no shame in that. So please reach out. Thank you all for joining us for Real Talk Relationships with Speak Up and Empower, conversations that shape the way we live. Yes. Bye. Bye. Bye, Sarah. Bye. We'll see you, Bill. Yeah, <laughs> Take we'll care. See you. Take care. <laughs>